Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be talking about three different ways that you can cook food in an emergency situation for you and your family. Okay, so now we all know that if you live in an apartment complex, you live in a high rise, you, you know, some of these places, you may have a balcony, but they don't want you to have a damn grass grill or a charcoal grill, correct? You know, I mean, it's just uh, the laws of nature because there's most people that just don't have common sense, so they ruin it for everybody else. So, what can you do in an emergency situation, and how can you survive using three different methods and three different types of stoves? So, you probably want to know, well, what do I do if, you know, somebody says something or anything else. Well, in an emergency situ situation, you know, sometimes it is what it is. You gotta survive, you know? I mean, they wanna come knocking on your door. Oh, well, you know, I mean, it, as long as you're using common sense and, you know, you're, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're not cooking it inside, with two of them at least, of what I'm gonna show you out of the three, then so be it. You know, we're not talking regular times here where you're throwing a party or something like that and you're breaking the rules. We're talking about emergency type situation. So in an emergency type situation, the rules change. You have to survive, especially if you uh, don't have power, if they turned your gas off, um, if they turned off your water, you know, you gotta find some way to survive. So let's get going on these three different types. Of small little portable charcoal grill okay now it has an air vent on the bottom and it has an air vent on the top so you can control the airflow the reason that I went with this particular one it's a recent art as you can see um, I like the design and also it was on Amazon Prime Day so I got it for 20 bucks instead of 33 so I saved $13. Now, the one thing that I did really like about this stove is it has this catch plate right here, okay? So if something does come out of the bottom air vent, a hot coal or something, it's gonna go into the catch plate and I don't have to worry about it burning what surface I have it on, whether it's wood, concrete, whatever it may be, okay? Um, <clears throat> has a nice cooking area, everything else. One thing you have to remember is when you're buying something for a survival situation, you need it to be portable. You know, you're not going to take your huge gas grill from outside and you're not going to put that in your car. Now, if you had a big pickup truck or a van or something like that, you know, you want to lug something that huge around, uh, be my guess, but uh, that's taking up so much more space where you could get more supplies. So that has something like this. If you're like the most Americans and you got a car, you know, this would fit right in your trunk with no problem. You know, you could also, you know, you're going to have to make sure that, you know, you you have charcoal for it, you know, limit your charcoal because the charcoal, you know, it'll burn for quite a while. You can cook quite a bit, you know, don't just load the thing right up. You know, if you only have a couple of bags or whatever, you want to make sure that you're only using what you may need. You can always add a few more pieces to get through the cooking process of whatever it is you're cooking. Now, also with one of these, you could also try to use wood. If you can find some dry wood, small pieces and everything else and put in here to um, cook with. Now, the one thing you have to be very careful of when you're using wood is it's going to flame up on you. So you can't have a real hot fire. You'd probably want to get a fire going in it, a small fire, and let it burn down to where you get the coals and just feed it with small pieces of wood. So you would make sure to have some type of a knife or a small hatchet or something where you could split pieces of wood so they're small and they can fit in here and you could keep an even um, burning source going in an emergency situation. I would use that as a last resort. So having a small charcoal grill, all right, <clears throat> I have seen some of these charcoal grills. Uh, if you want to check some of the department stores and stuff right now because a lot of places they're just, you know, it's winter time. 
So um, coming into winter, so all those summertime products and stuff, they're all clearancing to get rid of it because they don't want to have to pack it away. They'd rather sell it and get it off the shelf than have to pack it in the back somewhere when they bring out all the Christmas junk. So you might be able to get some, find some good deals at a lot of your different department stores. And if you don't see something on there, check on their websites because sometimes they throw them on there too and you can get some really good deals on their websites. So the first one was the charcoal grill. So the next is sticking right along with the same way, all right? A gas grill, portable gas grill. These are the legs, they pop down, they go over, they go back underneath here, and then they stand right up. This holds everything on, okay? So it's your basic gas grill. You take, you can get a one pound cylinder. You can buy them um, at the stores, okay? They used to come in a two pack nowadays. Uh, you used to be able to get them, buy them single, but lately everything has gone to a two pack. And those connect right to this regulator that you see over here. All right. Now, one thing that I would think about doing is if you're going to use this and um, you plan on bugging in and um, this is going to be one of your emergency backups, these things get really expensive really quick. You can go and buy an adapter hose that connects to this regulator and it'll run to a 20 pound tank that will last for a very long time cooking on one of these stoves. Okay. So you extend your life on your gas by having more and not just the one little one pounders. Now these will, if you use your, you know, use your head and use common sense, you can make these stretch out a little bit, but they're not going to last for days on end. You know, um, if you if you cook three meals a day, you may get one day per canister. Depends on what you are cooking and how long you are have your grill on and how high so if you can keep the heat lower and still get the cooking done you're gonna save on your gas okay so I would suggest if this is something that you're gonna be looking into that you'd look into getting an extension hose that fits a 20 pound tank that adapter that connects right to this regulator and this way here you have a lot more gas to get you through an emergency situation because the last thing you want to do is run out of gas all right last but not least and I've done videos on this this is a Coleman stove all right now you can get Coleman stoves you can buy name brand stoves you can buy store brand stoves and everything else the biggest thing is you want to get some type of a propane stove all right, there's a lot of controversy over can you cook inside with a stove or can you not? My personal opinion is as long as you are there physically watching what you are cooking and everything else and making sure that the burner is on and it is lit, you should have no problem cooking inside in an emergency situation. Now that being said, most of your homes nowadays, most of your apartment complexes, your condos, wherever you may be living okay besides a tent all right they come with carbon monoxide detectors so if the detector goes off all right don't panic turn it off open up a window a door or whatever else and let the place air out now if you are concerned what i would suggest is is you put this stove close to a window open the window so you have air ventilation coming in and you should have no problems at all. But I would feel perfectly safe cooking on this, right on my electric stove, just set it right on the top and cooking on it. And if we had a hurricane or something like that, and I wouldn't bat an eye at it, but that is me. You all have to make your own decisions because there's a lot of tit and tat back and forth about this whole situation. Now you could always take this and take it outside in your garage, on your back patio, whatever else, and cook out there and you should have no problems. You know, it's just like anything else. If you are cooking, you don't want to just walk away and leave it, especially in an emergency situation. And if you're cooking indoors. Now the other two stoves, do not please cook indoors with those stoves. They have to be outside, period. End of conversation. All right, it's kind of a no brainer. 
but I'll throw that little disclaimer out there to save you a little bit of heartache, all right? So the charcoal and the gas grill, you have to cook outside, and this you could use inside as your regular stove that you would already be using. It's just gas, okay? A lot of people have propane gas. I don't think you're gonna have any problems. They do collapse right down. They are portable. Um, it's a great thing. These, this takes up little to no space. I mean, you could slide it under the front seat of your car if you had to, and you are good to go. You just have to have some place to store either your 20 pound tank or <clears throat> your one pound cylinders. Now, if you don't have a lot of room in your vehicle, you may want to make sure that you stock up on a few of these. All right. Now, a few meaning you can figure one cylinder per day. All right. Um, so if you wanted to get two weeks worth, you need 14 of these things. Um, that's just how I would, I would base off of a one pound cylinder. Now that's not running your stove on high all the time when you're cooking. All right. You want to regulate your heat because the lower the heat that you can get your heat down, the longer this is going to last but you have to make sure that you still can cook the food you want to cook. All right. So this has been three different ways and three different stoves and three different cooking methods to help you out in an emergency situation. They could really help you if you, especially if you had to leave your home and they're compact enough, you can take them with you. So you can make sure that you have some way to cook for you and your family. Now that's the whole point of this whole thing, right? You know, you want to make sure that, you know, you can still supply the demand of food that your family is going to have in an emergency situation. So having one of these three or all three of these three would be a great benefit. Now the charcoal grill, like I did say, you know, I got that for 20 bucks uh, because I got it on sale. You can watch sales and everything else. Um, you know, but I've seen them at Walmart for under 20 bucks, you know, same goes with, uh, the, the gas grill here. If you're going to go for a Coleman, it's going to set you back between probably 50 and 80 bucks, somewhere in that general area. All right. But you can check the store brands and, and a lot of different areas, check online and everything else. You probably can find a two burner stove that'll do just as good and probably cost you half as much. It's all in what you want to spend. Okay. And your gas grill over here, that there, you know, I mean, I picked that up at Walmart at the end of the season last year, and that set me back just a little under 20 bucks. I think it was 1998 or something. They had them on sale, you know. Walmart is a great place and target in the end of the seasons to go in and try to find, because they reduce the prices of all their summertime products to make room for all the Christmas crap. So you can really find some really good deals if you have to. What I've noticed is that sometimes they move some of this stuff all out into the garden section because they want to start setting up all the Christmas stuff. So make sure that you go outside and look around because you'll see all those bright, nice yellow tags. And you can go in there and find and get yourself some really good deals. So this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. This has been three different ways that you can cook in an emergency situation for you and your family to ensure that you're feeding them and you're giving them something nutritious and good to eat and you're keeping them happy because people that are hungry can tend to get really hungry, angry. So, until next time, Survival Preparedness for Beginners, I'll catch you all on the flip side.